and uh, XC. XC is called capacitive. Capacitive reactants. Okay, so we are coining these two terms. XL, inductive reactants, XC, capacitive reactants. We will be uh, discussing about that in this topic. Okay, so what happens you know when you apply ac to inductor likewise what happens when you apply ac voltage to capacitor so you have a capacitor and you are applying ac voltage to that what is going to happen right and then we do two three things we have inductor capacitor we have resistor all these guys we will be connecting them in various uh, orders and we will develop an expression for okay we will we will see what happens when you have an inductor a capacitor and a resistor lcr okay when it is connected in series in a circuit that means we have inductor capacitor and resistor in series in a circuit we'll be studying about that lcr circuit okay and we'll be doing two things we'll be doing a phasor solution and we have an analytical solution two things we will do and we'll also look into a very important aspect of it called resonance what do you mean by resonance in an lcr circuit okay resonance and from there on we talk about what do you mean by sharpness of resonance then power power factor and uses of ac current okay we'll discuss then this is again very important lc oscillations okay this is where you tend to understand the use of this capacitor and inductor okay so what do you mean by oscillator and how these guys play a role an inductor and a capacitor together in a circuit okay and we'll again develop some expression for that last but not the least we'll study about transformers okay that step up step down and you know what is the number of turns required what is the secondary voltage some of that i have given you a, a brief in uh, our uh, previous topic how transformers work and all that stuff we'll be studying about that in detail in this topic as well okay i'm just trying to slowly uh, move you into this uh, ac current topic all right <clears throat> so, um, Nandu, can you please help me? Yes, yeah, sir. Why AC? AC voltages can be easily and efficiently converted from one voltage to other by means of transformers. We have seen that, no? In transformers, uh, we can use step up, step down, and then we can convert voltages, right? increase or decrease as we, we want right so that's one of the main advantages of using a ac voltage electrical energy can also be transmitted economically over long distances over large distances we we have seen that why 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 are we telling economically and long distances here nando uh something i forgot wait While you think about it, Siri, can you pitch in? So is it because we can um, increase the voltage? Yeah, because the moment you are able to increase the voltage, right? You can, yeah. you can. Uh, it doesn't wear the out the yeah, wires. The same power. Okay, you can transmit it in two ways. You can have a large, uh, a small voltage you can have a large current okay think of it like this uh, medium voltage large current area under them is power or you can transmit it at very high voltage and very small current this way also you can transmit again this is the same power as above but the fashion in which you are transmitting it in the long wires 
okay um, from the place where it is generated our uh, idle plant let's say to your house in hsr layout right it is getting generated here you can do it in two ways you can transmit it in two ways the advantage is here if you have a very high current right my i square r losses are going to be high means here uh, whatever may be the metal that you are using here okay it is going to have some resistance it is going to have i square r losses isn't it so our key aim is to reduce this i you are able to understand no yes sir so if here the i is large i square also is going to be large so lot of power losses are going to happen transmission losses are going to happen that's why we are saying we are using the word economically economically means you don't want any losses over large distances here if you see we have used high v but our current is quite low okay maybe it is as low as some milliamperes or you know decimals may be send it because of that i square our losses are very very reduced marginal okay and the whole thing is enabled only because you are able to convert the voltage isn't it you are able to step up here yahan pe voltage kam hai yahan pe voltage kafi zyada hai you are able to do that you are able to do that only because you are having an ac voltage if you are having a dc voltage a voltage that does not change with time theek hai voltage versus time if you take dc voltage is like this right can this voltage be manipulated it cannot be right you take a transformer and you put a dc voltage like this on this side and you put a uh, you try to have another coil and try to take a uh, you know the secondary voltage here voltage primary voltage secondary can you increase or decrease here if you do it in this fashion if you supply this here and do anyone can Sir? anyone can answer if you supply dc voltage in the primary yeah the same transformer can you manipulate this voltage can you make it high low no why why there be no induced yes here emf is generated because of induction okay emf is generated because see here we are take we are feeding the primary we are trying to develop uh, emf in the secondary okay that method of developing is through induction okay and the primary need the basis of induction is changing flux isn't it i want changing flux so how will flux change if current changes how will current change if voltage changes so if voltage is not changing current also will not change if current is not changing where will flux change okay the flux that is going through this na wo girega kam nahi hoga constant flux rahega the moment you have constant constant flux your emf also will be zero because emf is going to be change in flux over time isn't it that means yaar agar mujhe yahan pe induced emf chahiye if i want to induce it then this voltage necessarily has to be alternating in nature alternating voltage hai to current will change current will change means flux will change changing flux agar hai to yahan pe bhi i will be able to induce the emf right and once i am able to induce emf then i manipulate the turns number of turns in primary number of turns in secondary i can manipulate it and i can get a high voltage guys are you following yes sir slowly now we are moving across topics isn't it yeah <clears throat> so that's the reason why ac is preferred over dc go ahead ac voltage exhibits a characteristic for resonance which can be used for tuning i will uh, deal with this when we go in the lesson okay but you can say ac circuit you can tune 
Most of the electrical devices we, we use require AC voltage. This is mainly because most of the electrical energy sold by power companies is transmitted and distributed as an alternating current. Okay. So these are the reasons why um, AC is preferred. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Let's go ahead. So, as we said, we understood what AC is. Now, we will try to see what happens when we pass alternating voltage into a resistor. So, we are discussing this scenario. Alternating voltage or EMF, only one resistor by I is there. We are going to pass. Okay. Yeah. Now, if you see, no. There you already in the previous topic you already saw. We are going to say E is equal to E naught into sine omega t. Kamala when she is peddling the cycle. Remember? So like that whenever we have uh, when we need to model okay, certain physical stuff like for example voltage we want to model. And we see Baya, what kind of guy you are? Are you steady? Are you changing with time? We see that this guy alternating means he's going to change with time, right? So whenever we have stuff that is going to change with time periodically, okay, we take the help of trigonometry. Trigonometry, especially we take the help of sine and cosine functions, right? In order to in order to model these kind of entities. Are you able to understand? That's the reason why you see. Uh, voltage can be written as V is equal to Pm into sine omega t. Okay, what is this Vm? Vm means here, tomorrow EMF, what is it? What is the value of it? A peak, isn't it? So this, if I am uh, uh, mapping voltage with respect to time, this peak value of this is called Vm or Vmax. Okay, and this V max is going to vary with time. Kabi zero hai, kabi plus hai, wapas zero hai, minus hai. So it is going in a sinusoidal fashion. Okay, so Vm multiplied by sine omega t. Okay, sine omega t is going to give you the cyclic, the uh, increasing, decreasing behavior periodically. And Vm is going to tell you how big the curve is going to be. E itna hai. Yeah, if it is this much, right? It, this is going to, Vm is going to determine that, okay? So, Vm into sine omega t is a apt way to represent the instantaneous voltage, okay? Okay, this, supposing your voltage is changing with respect to time, supposing you have something like this, you will say, yeah, what is the voltage at a certain time? t is equal to 1, t is equal to 2, isn't it? So, you can find out. So this value which you are finding, that is denoted with this V. So V is going to be instantaneous voltage at any particular time. Are you able to understand? This is instantaneous in nature. Vm is max. Sin omega t is the function, trigonometric function. Guys, do you want to make a small note of this as to why uh, trigonometric function is used number one okay and what do you mean by vm and what do you mean by v just make a small note of it and let me know if i can go ahead all right <clears throat> let me quickly get rid of this okay Go ahead, uh, Nandu. Uh, voltage varies sinusoidally, and we have a max voltage Vm. So the instantaneous voltage can always be expressed as given, and omega is its angular frequency. Omega is the angular frequency, like uh, <clears throat> for so many rotations per second, revolutions per second, karke, it's nothing but a frequency, hertz. To find the value of current to the resistor, we apply Kirchhoff's loop rule, sigma e of t is equal to zero. 
the circuit and yeah. get so we are telling no um your emf okay your, or your voltage is a function of time right yeah so uh, what is kirchhoff's law kirchhoff's uh, uh, loop rule what does it say it says that yeah the what what does kirchhoff's loop rule say you have two things now one is called junction junction yeah. loop other one is called loop yeah one is the sum of currents entering a loop yes. is equal to the currents leaving it correct okay sum of we have seen all this in current electricity right if i is the current which is entering the junction it will be equal to i is equal to i1 plus i2 isn't it and we yes. see voltage drop across the loop is equal to zero isn't it yeah if you if you if you sum up all the voltages voltage drops across the loop is equal to zero that's the rule we are trying to use okay then we say okay what is the voltage across you boss that is going to change with time it is given by this expression so you take it as it is vm sin omega t okay or it, in our earlier cases dc current what we used to say we used to say v minus i into r isn't it because i is going to be the current which is going to go ir is going to be the drop across this so this one minus this one whole thing is going to become zero isn't it yeah this is what we used to do here instead of taking a static v because it's going to be changing continuously with respect to time we simply take this as vm sin omega t minus ir ir is nothing but the potential drop across this is equal to zero isn't it so we have yeah. seen, we have seen these kind of things in the numericals which we are doing right for example if i have two resistances right this is voltage v this resistance r1 this one r2 we'll say this is v1 this is v2 right aditi yeah. what is the value of v1 how do you ca calculate v1 aditi if i is the current that is flowing through the circuit what will be v1 um v1 will be v is equal to um i into r very good so v1 will be equal to whatever is the current that is going into the circuit i into r1 and what is v2 v2 is going to be i into r2 isn't it okay, this okay. i you will calculate by looking at the overall resistance in the circuit right and then you will say v is equal to v1 plus v2 we have seen when we are whenever we are solving these kind of numericals in series we say whatever v is there is equal to it's going to get dropped across all the resistances isn't it or another way of saying is v minus v1 minus v2 is equal to zero isn't it so this is nothing but kirchhoff's loop loop rule that same thing we are using here is it okay guys yes sir <clears throat> all right uh, vm sin omega t is equal to ir or i is equal to vm by r into sin omega t okay so <clears throat> i am able to find out current by using vm by r into sin omega t okay so this vm by r which is there okay this vm by r i want to write it as im because what is vm vm is the peak peak voltage we have cycle pe chal raha and i am having a peak voltage here this is going to be vm theek hai bhaiya vm divided by r when you are at the highest right then whatever current i am going to get that current i am going to call it as im all right so that means my equation is going to be for current i is going to be im into sin omega t and what is this value of what is this im im is nothing but pm by r okay 
And if you look at it, I m is equal to V m by R. Ohm's law is also getting. <clears throat> it is representing Ohm's law. That means just because we are using alternate current does not mean Ohm's law is going to get violated. Is it okay? Can you please make a note of this? Nothing from that loop law. We are just, uh, 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 you know, finding out what is the value of i. And then we are uh, developing an expression for i in terms of max current i m. Okay, so if you look at, I told you, we will be putting this AC current through capacitor. We are putting AC current through inductor. In all these cases, we will start off with this. We will say, boss, I have V is equal to Vm sin omega t. Okay, this is the uh, EMF uh, that I am going to apply. Then what I will do from that, I will find out what is the value of I. From that, I will find out what is the value of power right so this I am going to do for all the cases the procedure is the same I will find out what is resistance okay can I go ahead guys yes sir Nando yeah when voltage uh, if you map this in the form of a graph Okay, so this is how it will look. This is my VM curve and this is going to be my IM. IM is given in gray. But in the resistance, when you apply it through resistance, you will see resistance is following voltage. When it is zero, I am zero. When voltage is peak, current is also peak. Means there is no phase difference between them. They are happening in sequence. You understand this, guys? Yes, sir. So you get maximum current when voltage is maximum. That's what we are saying. And you are getting minimum current when voltage is minimum. <clears throat> Go ahead. Like the applied voltage. The current varies sinusoidally and has corresponding positive and negative values during each cycle. That's what we just, just now discussed. Thus, the sum of the instantaneous current values over one complete cycle is zero. The average current is zero. Isn't it? Because we are telling, yeah, uh, you have a circuit, right? In this circuit, your uh, current direction is flowing, okay? Supposing at one instant this is positive, this is negative. So your current is flowing this way. Then in the next instant, in the, during the next, next cycle of voltage, when the voltage is like this, this becomes negative, this becomes positive. That means current is now flowing in this direction. Isn't it? So if I have a bulb here, right? So sometimes the bulb is seeing current go through this way. Sometimes in the next cycle, the bulb is, uh, current is going through this way. Bulb will always glow because if, if for it, does, it doesn't matter. It just needs flow of electrons, okay? It needs, uh, you know, Q by T. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if the same electrons are reciprocating this side, that side, okay? So that's, that's what is going to happen here in the case of uh, an alternating current, right? So if you say, yeah, net, how many electrons actually passed a particular point and, you know, reached this, eh, you can't do. Some electrons are going this way, same amount of electrons are coming in this way. So across a given cross section, I can't tell you if there is any net current. Average is always going to be zero. Does it make sense, guys? Yes, sir. The fact that the average current is zero, however, does not mean that the average power consumed is zero and that there is no dissipation of electrical energy. Because all smart people will say, 
isn't it? Sir, P is equal to V into I. So you are telling I is equal to zero. That means most of the electrical application uh, appliances, when I'm uh, connecting it to alternating voltage, they will not consume any power. Power dissipated is zero. So nice, right? But that's not the case, okay? Just because current is zero, it does not mean power is equal to zero, which we will see mathematically. Joule heating is given by I square R and depends on I square, which is always positive, whether I is positive or negative and not on I. Okay, so that's where the coconut is broken. Okay, it is Joule heating when we say is I square into R. So whatever be the current which is flowing, definitely I square is going to be positive and we'll get, okay, a positive power is going to get dissipated in the circuit, okay? Real power is going to get dissipated. Thus, there is Joule heating and dissipation of electrical energy when an AC current passes through a resistor. The instantaneous power dissipated in the resistor is C is equal to I square R, which is equal to I square M R sine square omega T. Yeah, because I you know, I is equal to I m into sin omega t. Correct? Huh? So, this value I am substituting here. So, I square will become I, m I suffix m square or I will always keep calling it as I m square sin square omega t. Do you agree? Yes, sir. I am just using the equation I which we have just now developed for current I is equal to I am into sin omega t. The average value of P over a cycle is. So why are we telling average value of P? Okay, we are saying that yeah, if I square R is I m square, right? This I is not going to be constant. It's going to change with respect to time, right? Of course, I m is there. But this omega t, right, as we discussed here, I m is there because of which, uh, you know, the actual, this is I is equal to I m sine omega t. I m value may be 2, 3, 4, whatever, some fixed value, which will make our curve to become bigger or sometimes smaller also. We, supposing I m is smaller, then we will have a Chotu curve also. Doesn't matter. But I am is going to manipulate the sine omega t. Okay. So, which means that as the current is going to be continuously changing, right? Power also is going to be continuously changing. It is not that power is going to be a, a instantaneous power is power loss is experienced. Okay. But then you'll say, yeah, you're telling bulb is there. You say 40 watts. You're not, uh, uh, you know, telling that you're, you're, you're not giving a changing value. What is that 40 watt bulb? Okay, you're telling the AC, uh, you know, if you have an AC, you say it's a one ton AC. One ton AC means what? Okay, you're able to say the rating of it, right? So here you're telling it is instantaneous value. It is changing with time. How come you are able to tell 40 watt, 100 watt? Okay, so these values which are specified, the rating which you are giving is based on an average value. Average value of the power that is getting dissipated over the circuit. Okay, that is why we want to calculate it here. And that P average is indicated by P bar, okay? And when you enclose it in this brackets like this, okay? That means this I square R, I want to find the average value, okay? So we're telling I square R, which is again nothing but what we have just now seen, average value of this particular term, I am square R into sine square omega T, okay? Just make a note till here, we'll go to the next slide.
Sakshi, are you following, ma? Yes, sir. Do let me know when you're finished. We've seen that. We've seen average current is zero, okay? Voltage is zero, but power is not, okay? Now, if you look at IM, is IM a constant value or is IM a changing value? Changing. See, I is changing. Is constant? Ah, I is changing. I is equal to I M. Okay, this is like NBA. You saw that, no? NBA sin omega t is equal to epsilon naught. Okay, so that value doesn't change. Ah, is it NBA or NBA into omega? Sorry. NBA into omega, that value doesn't change. Aditi, do you understand? Yeah, 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 sir. Okay. But E is equal to this, this value we are calling E naught. E naught mm -hmm. into sin omega t. Isn't it? The sin omega t is changing. E naught is a fixed value given by NBA into omega. Isn't it? Yes, yeah, sir. Okay. So similarly here, I is equal to I m sin omega t. Okay. So that in fact this V is equal to Vm sin omega t same. Okay, here you you wanted to use the word EMF because you are talking about induced EMF. Same thing we are doing, V is equal to Vm sin omega t here. We are not calling it VMF, we are calling it voltage. That's all. Alright? So on the same lines you are developing I. This I is instantaneous. This E is instantaneous. This V is instantaneous. I am fixed value, peak value. E, E naught, peak value. V M, peak value. Peak value will not change. Is it okay? So, yeah. I am does not change. R, R is changing with time. Does R change with time? No, right? No. no. So, I am into R does not change with time. They are always going to be constant. So, pull them out. So what is going to change with time is only sine square omega t. Do you agree? So when I'm trying to find out the average, I pull out i square r, i m square r, and try to value, find the average of this guy, sine square omega t. All right? Now, little bit of trigger we have to use, okay? If you look at this particular um formula cos 2 theta is going to be 2 cos square theta minus 1 okay cos 2 theta can also be written as 1 minus 2 sine square theta confirm to me whether you are comfortable and you are familiar with these two formulae all of you Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. When, is, when we were kids, sir, why are you telling us all that, sir? Very good. So, 2 sin square t is going to be from this 1 minus, um, I don't know why I'm putting uh, theta here, t here. So, cos 2 theta means theta. Therefore, what is sin square theta? Sin square theta is going to be equal to 1 minus cos 2 theta divided by 2. Correct? Huh? So, this formula I am going to use here. So I am taking off this half outside, half into 1 minus cos 2 theta here is nothing but cos 2 omega t. Okay, so I am going to find the, when you want to find the average value of this, I want to find the average value of this guy. You understand guys? 
only one time all this lumbar chota things will do later on we'll just keep doing fada fada okay <clears throat> Nandu? The average value of a function f of t over a period t is given by average of f of t is equal to 1 by t integral of f of t dt. From 0 to t. Okay. So here integrals you have some idea but you may not you know you may not understand this completely. So don't worry about it. I'll uh, teach this to you in our topic, okay? But suffice it to say that here, whatever your function is, okay? That function, when you're trying to take the average value, what will you do? You will find the area under the function and you're trying to divide it with respect to uh, the time interval, maybe so many infinite slices, okay? So if your function is varying like this, what is this integral going to do? This is from zero to t. So when you're integrating it, you're breaking this function, this break, breaking, breaking this function into small, small areas. This may be from time zero to one. This may be from one to two, like that, okay? You are breaking it up. Hey, why are you breaking it up like this, Da? It is that limit uh, concept, right? If it is constant with respect to time, I can simply multiply it off. V into T. Isn't it? The distance traveled is V into T. But if it is not a constant value, then I have to assume, okay? Supposing your velocity is changing with time in this fashion. What will I do? I will say, here, I will take a very small interval of time, let's say 0 0.01 second something. Within that, I will think the velocity is constant because the time interval is very small. V into T is going to be the distance traveled. I got my first distance. Then what I will do, again I will increment by 0 0.01. At that time, velocity is again not changed. So I will get area under the curve distance too. So like that, when I am getting that velocity value v of t this guy is v of t time is equal to three seconds what is v of t i will have an equation v is equal to ut plus half a t square so at uh, v t is equal to three seconds i will get velocity velocity at the end of three seconds i will increment by 0 0.001 and i will get the distance traveled so like that when i keep on multiplying that is what I am calling it as integral. I have to understand guys, here integral means I am looking at the delta t value close to zero. Delta t is tending towards zero. During that time, I am finding the area under the curve. So when you are using the symbol integral, integral means you are looking at area under the curve. Typically, area under the curve is going to give you some meaning. For example, if you do f multiplied by t, you are having force. Force is a function of time. Okay, supposing the force is continuously changing, as in the case of simple, harmo simple harmonic motion, when this um, spring is compressed with an external force. Initially, the spring is compressing very less, okay? distance x okay and then the spring has now compressed if you want to compress it further same force is not required more force is required so you first apply 10 newton you compress it by one centimeter next one centimeter requires you to apply 20 newton and again more okay so that means the external force to compress this is not uniform so if you draw a curve you may get something like this then how do you find out what is the total force you used? Then you will integrate it between F and T. Again, for small, small intervals, force was constant. Eight centimeter to make compress karne ke liye, you took something. Supposing you do only small thing. During that 0 0.001 centimeter, 
was the force constant? You will think yes. Okay, because the compression was only 0 0.001 centimeter. Then you can multiply it, right? So whenever this function is not uh, linear, then it's only using integration, you can find out this multiplied by this. So this process of finding the area under the curve, area under the curve is going, some, going to give you some meaningful entity. V into T, this is going to give you distance. Maybe here, this is going to give you work done. F into T, force into this, uh, sorry, this can be displacement, okay? Supposing I take displacement, force into displacement can mean work done. Right here, when you do, you're going to get energy, power, right? So integration is used to find the area under the curve. And if you are going to divide it by the number of time slices you have taken, supposing you have taken some 30, 100 time slices, total area under the curve divided by the time slices is going to give you average. That means from this, you are trying to get this. So all these things, you try to take an average value. Okay, so this average value is going to be this one. Whereas these ones are instantaneous values. Are you able to follow guys? Yes, yeah, sir. Completely you lost me, huh? No, sir. Okay. So, uh, when the, the moment I use 1 by t, that means I am interested in averaging. This means this is this integral. This is just make a note of this means to find area under curve when curve changes with time. The whole concept of integrals is that. In fact, in application of integrals, mathematics topic, okay, you will have a specific topic called find the area and the curve. So in most of the competitive exams, right, uh, we will be getting physics numericals which require us to know, okay, this particular aspect of integration application of integrals and also one more very important topic called differential equations. So when you are, you know, learning integrals, please focus around these two topics, area under the curve, area under the curves and differential equations under integrals. And integrals essentially means finding the area under the curve and the curve is changing with respect to time. If you are having a curve like this, finding area is easy, no? Triangle, rectangle, you can break it up. But when it is not so, then you need the method of integration. Okay, all that is over. So what? That means now I will be integrating cos 2 omega t, okay? <clears throat> And uh, you will also learn, just like derivative, you have formula, right? A derivative of sine x is cos x. Uh, you know, a integral of cos x will be sine x. Okay? And then this, uh, in chain rule, you will say, right? Uh, derivative of sine 2 theta is 2 into cos 2 theta. So like that, in integrals, you will have ulta. It will become sine 2 omega t divided by 2 omega. Here you will multiply it, here you will divide it. Is it all right, guys? Yes, sir. The details yes, of sir. that, we will, the next topic which we are going to start. What did we start now? Probability, no? After probability, we'll be covering that. Okay? <clears throat> so, if you, this is the, we have applied the integral, zero to t, we have to apply the limits. Top limit minus upper limit minus lower limit. Upper limit is 2 omega t. Lower limit is 2 omega. This t will have to be 0 because this is a variable here. You will be substituting this one 
then minus this one okay always this is the formula for it so supposing we have something cos x right and you are doing between x1 and x2 when you apply the uh, when you try to apply this you will be cos of upper limit minus cos of lower limit okay supposing you are getting the function x square between the limit 1 and 2 you will say 2 square minus 1 square this is what applying the upper upper limit minus lower limit that's what it means is it okay so we are just doing that here whatever is the variable we are substituting the upper limit value minus we are substituting the lower limit value So what is that final is equal to zero? What is it ma? Like in the end it says equal to oh, zero. Is equal to zero because the sine sine function, right? This one by two pi is average, but if you see sine, this will be here this this value is going to be positive. Next it's going to become negative. Here this is divide of square, no? Uh, yeah. So over a cycle, one time it is going to be positive, next time it is going to be negative. Therefore, this entire term which for which we are analyzing, average value of sine square omega t. Okay, so this value is going to be equal to zero. Okay, but we still have, if you see this, um, um, we wrote it in this way, no? Not average value of sine square omega t, I'm sorry. Um, average value of cos square, cos 2 omega t. You are able to understand, no? Because we, are, we broke it up. We said sine square omega t is equal to half of 1 minus cos 2 omega t. So whatever we have done so far, is we have found out this guy. We found the value of cos 2 omega t and we got the average value of 0. So we, if you substitute 0 here, we will we will get the average value of sine square omega t as half. Okay, because this average value of cos 2 omega t is becoming 0. Is it okay, guys? Yes, sir. So once you substitute this average value of cos omega t, which you've just done as zero, okay, we get sine square omega t is equal to half, okay? Now, what is power we said? Average power is nothing but half of i square, i m square r, why? This half is because of this guy. Okay, I'll just take you back, see. This is what we said, power is equal to i m square r into average value of this. Do you agree? Yes, sir. And then what is the average value of sine square, um, this guy? Half. Average value of this we found out to be half because half into one minus average of this, this guy became zero. So sine square omega t average value is half. Okay, so this guy becomes half. That means average value of power is going to be half multiplied by i square r. Okay, that means average power is going to be half of the peak power. I m square r is peak power, half of that. That means if my power is continuously changing, okay, power is continuously changing actually you may not have the <clears throat> the negative cycle you will have it like this this is going to be the power curve right so half of this this is the peak 
So your P bar is going to look like this. I able to understand why I took only positive cycle. I took positive cycle because I will have positive and negative, but I square, okay, will only have positive cycles. So power is changing in this way, okay, as voltage is changing in this way. Voltage negative jarai, current negative jarai, but power positive. Are you able to understand, guys? Yes, sir. This is cycle yes, one. This is cycle one. This is the negative cycle. I'll call cycle two positive cycle power. Okay, but it is changing. So, ye wala jo hai na, this value, this is your P bar. This value which you calculated is equal to half of I m square R. Means ye wala. This is going to be your I m square R. I will understand. A peak power hai, a average power. Average power is half of that. That's what we got. Is it okay? If you want yes. that, uh, sorry, I just. Don't do it. Okay. <clears throat> I hope you made a note of those diagrams. Sakshi, are you following? Yes, sir. Did you make a note of the entire derivation here? Did you understand how average power is half of m square r? So, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so, could you just go to the previous slide for a second? No. Ah. Okay, yeah, so you can change it. Now, my thing is, yeah, um, see, I want, uh, there I use a formula, no, where in uh, DC current, okay, DC current, I know P is equal to I square R, okay, I want to use that same formula here also, okay, how do I do that? Then I say, yeah, you develop, you find out one uh, value of current I, okay? And this I is, um, if, if, if for example, if you take I is equal to I average square, okay? This is I average, okay? Then you take this I average or average square, right? So what is this going to be? Did we get an expression for I? Did we get an expression for I? Here, this I, okay, um, is going to be half of I M. Where is that? Uh, we have not got it, no? So if you see this, what I'm telling is, 
average power we are getting it in the form of half i m square r okay i am saying i don't want to learn new formula i am aware of p is equal to i square r now when it is i uh, ac current you are giving me this formula p average is equal to half of uh, i square i m square r okay i want to make both of these same i want to have a similar formula for this yahan pe kuch hai yahan pe kuch hai i am not okay with that that means what we do is when we are trying to compare power and average power we are seeing that resistance value is not different the term is the same that means i somehow have to make this guy equivalent to this guy that means if i want to use the same formula i square that has to be equal to half of i am square isn't it because the power equation which we have derived is this one right so this if it is equal to this then i will find out what is the value of i that value of i for me is going to be equal to 1 by square root of 2 into square root of i am is nothing but i am isn't it so if i have if i am able to find out this is a new definition for me okay this is an equivalent current this is not a change in current this is an equivalent current or you can say average current right if i am able to find out an average current which is equal to uh, you know i am by root 2 right then i can you know i can say power is equal to i square into r are you able to understand guys just take a minute and uh, digest this and if i see dc current i square r is constant if i see ac current okay this value is continuous this, this formula is changing i want to equate it i can do it only when i compare these two guys and in this okay. if i am able to define a new value of i which is like an average value okay a new value of i which is an average value which is equal to 1 by root 2 times of i m 1 by root 2 translates to 0.707 so that new current which i am getting which is nothing like an average current which is equal to 0.707 times of the peak current okay once i am able to get this value then i can use the formula p is equal to i square r this is this i okay there then what i have done is i have now made this formula the same as the formula which we are using in the case of dc circuit so this is for ac circuit this is for dc circuit same formula okay but here you have changed the definition of i this i is going to be 0.707 im okay make a note of it we will continue discussing on this tomorrow is it okay guys yes sir yes sir yes sir hum acha sa kal iske bare mein fir se discuss karenge don't worry all right guys let's meet tomorrow again same time see you tomorrow bye bye thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir